Well, hello, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott. I'm the head trader for WealthPress. Today is September 15th. Now, September is halfway over. Next, next month is my birthday month. It's October, and I hope that one at least goes slow. I hope I get my birthday wish. <laughs> I want a nice, slow month. All right, what do I say every day? Let's get into it right now. Now, I want to go over global economy today. Then I want to go through the Fed calendar because this is a, a, a big week. we got FOMC data coming out tomorrow, Jerome Powell speaking. Uh, we've got, uh, what do we got? we got industrial production today coming out. And tomorrow, we got retail sales. Retail sales is a big, big report right now because, again, it gives us a big, big picture into what the GDP will be because retail sales accounts for about two-thirds of the GDP of America's economy. So that's going to be a big, big report, and it's going to be very interesting to see what the Fed Chair Powell says tomorrow. He does not clo- he does not keep things close to the vest, and I want to see what he says about the future if he believes central banks are going to put more money in, if he thinks that the uh, Fed is going to put more money in, I want to see if he if he talks about buying, uh, putting money into Fed, allocating money into ETFs and individual stocks. I don't think he's going to do anything, but I think it's going to be very important to see what he has to say. Also, yesterday I gave you a bunch of stocks making 90-day highs for the week, so I I thought it would only be fair that I would give you all the opposite stocks today, stocks that are on my chopping block, stocks that are making 90-day lows. 90-day highs is a very good indication of a stock that'll go higher, especially when volatility doesn't extend. And same thing works on the way down. 90-day lows are really good signals for stocks that are about to go lower, assuming volatility doesn't increase too much. And I've put together a list of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for you that are on my chopping block. But first, Let's talk about global economy, and then we'll get into it then. And again, tomorrow, retail sales, Thursday, jobless claims, housing permits. The Fed manufacturing index is going to be really, really big because I think manufacturing and industrial stocks are going to be going up some more, um, especially if tech struggles due to China and so forth and so forth. But again, industrial production is what we want to pay attention to today, and to a lesser degree, the import-export number. But again... The hot report today is industrial production, and tomorrow it's going to be retail sales, the Fed announcement, and the press conference. And usually, usually, as we head into the FOMC, the market gets a bit subdued, so don't be surprised if we see a little less volatility today and with a with a pickup in volatility as we head into the press conference tomorrow. Now, global markets were mixed Tuesday after Wall Street rose on a flurry of corporate deals and Chinese economy actively activity not actively activity improved london opened higher while shanghai and hong kong gained tokyo declined and frankfurt opened lower u.s stock futures gained basically what it's telling us so far is the world economy was mixed overnight without any major directional trends and that's okay as i said usually the world markets especially the u.s economy gets really subdued before the fomc because think about it why would a large hedge fund want to make big trades or take on big positions right before the Fed could potentially change policy. In Asia, Shanghai Composite Index gained just a half a point. After August, retail sales rose half a percent over a year earlier. That's very positive, the first positive growth this year. That is big, 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 big news. Chinese statistics agency cited it's a sign of stable and continuous continuous economic recovery. I'm reading too fast today. I apologize for all my reading errors. On Monday, tech stocks gained on Wall Street after NVIDIA agreed to buy SoftBank's stake in chipmaker arm holdings for $40 billion. Now, I'm going to tell you something. NVIDIA is a hot stock. I've been really hot on this stock for the last few years, and it's only getting hotter. Why? Well, I'll tell you why. They're getting into the cloud. They made their name by making graphic processors for computers. Then they realized that the futures of processing is in the cloud, not in your processor, which is why all the uh, the traditional... Um, storage like Western Digital, um, Terra, Teradyne, I think that's the name. But Western Digital stocks and so forth are losing market cap because nobody's using traditional s- uh, storage anymore. People are using the cloud. Oracle climbed 4.3% after the software beat market beat out Microsoft to become the trusted technology provider for Chinese-owned video app TikTok. The deal requires approval from the Trump administration 
which deemed TikTok a security risk and demanded its sale to a U.S. owner. That'll be very, very interesting. I'm curious to see how that'll shake out. In another deal, um, Gilead agreed to buy Immunomedics for $21 billion. Verizon purchased TrackPhone. That's a very smart purchase for $6 billion. And Alibaba invested $4 billion in Grab. Now, the fact that companies are buying other companies is a very positive sign. Usually, companies don't go on a buying expedition before a bear market. So this is very, very crucial. AstraZeneca. Now, if you may not remember or you may remember AstraZeneca, AstraZeneca is one of the three companies that's currently in phase three trials for COVID-19. And they had a little... Uh, um, they had a little, what we, how would you call it? Uh, they had a little uh, disappointment. They had something happen with their clinical trials. They didn't say what it was, but they just resumed and the stock barely fell. Setback, That's in a nice way, that's what you would call it. They added half a percent following the weekend announcement that clinical trials for its COVID-19 vaccines will resume after a reported side effect in a British patient. I'm dying to know what the side effect was. Did he turn green? Did he turn yellow? Did he explode? Uh, did he have nausea? I mean, what happened to this guy? Because they resumed it very quickly. The vaccine is, is seen as one of the strongest contenders amongst the dozens of vaccines being tested. That's absolutely not true. It's definitely one of the dozens of vaccines being tested, but it's actually one of the three that's in phase three. You've got Pfizer, I believe you have Moderna or Merck, one of the two, and you have AstraZeneca. So it's actually only one of the three that's getting ready to produce something. So be very careful how you read these things. You know, one of the uh, dozens of vaccines. Yeah, one of the dozens. But what they don't tell you is most of the others are just making sure that people aren't dying from taking pills. It, 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 so it's a, stage one and two are very iffy. Uh, crude oil, again, only $37 a barrel, which means, as I always say, U.S. frackers have to pay up quite a bit to get what they need. So now let's talk about the economy. We got the NASDAQ 100, 50-day moving average, stable, 200-day moving average, not so stable. Still overbought, and I still think the market will cool off, but the fact that the 50-day line is moving south is a positive sign. If you look at long-term, you will see we are turning right now. And once we, have, we, we go below 80th percentile on the stocks trading above the 200-day moving average, we tend to go all the way down, but we're not there yet. And and the fact that there's only 46% they're trading above the 50-day moving average is positive. The trend right now is still bearish, short-term and long-term. And we are pre-election cycle, which means there's a good chance we're going to sit and kind of move sideways, go through a choppy period. So you've got to be extra careful and you've got to choose only the best stocks and the worst stocks. And that's why today I want to talk about 90-day break downs. Yesterday, I talked about breakouts. Today, I want to talk about breakdowns and take you through some stocks that are showing signs of breaking down. First one, World Wrestling Entertainment, WWE. I mean, this thing has been a dog for a long time. This is a year. Uh, February, it went down, and then it barely even, I mean, this, this didn't even have a bounce. It just, I mean, yeah, I had a little bounce from 30 to 40, but then all the way from the lows, and now it looks like it's going to test it again. I believe we're going to test the lows again in these weak stocks. That's one. Next one, that's WWE. Next one, post. And if you missed these, just watch the video again. Let me go to post. Let me go to on a weekly, on a monthly. Again, look at the six-month basis. Not good. Nine-month basis, not good. Long-term trend is down, and it's breaking now. It's one of the lowest prices we've seen since February. Post. Ticker symbol post, P-O-S-T. Next one is, and I told you about this one about two months ago. I told you SH, HSBC Bank. I told you about all the troubles with China, um, how the, the fact that U.S. and China are trade war, how Hong Kong and China, this is a Hong Kong-based bank. I mentioned it somewhere right around 25. Now it's a 20, lost about 20% of its value. Um, this is not a good bank not a good bank hsbc is a bank you want to sell they have they have very low institutional sponsorship in investment banking they're big savings alone and they have a lot of political turmoil on their hand next one sprout farms market i don't know what's up with this stock i thought it was a pretty strong stock but it's breaking its 200 day moving average right now and it's the lowest price that we've seen in since april not happy camper don't like this stock I would wait for it to break the 200-day moving average. 
uh, maybe about the $20 level, but it's on my chopping block for sure. Next one, CAH, Cardinal Health. Not all healthcare stocks are moving up. This stock is a dog. It's well below the 200 day moving average. It's already near the prehistoric lows. It's breaking down right now, and I'm not a light, I don't like this stock. So if you're holding any of these stocks, it's a good time to get out or short these stocks or buy a put. I've got um, three more Exxon, um, Exxon Mobil. Intra, what is this? Intrexon. What is that? I thought it was Exxon. I, I, I got the wrong stock. It's Exxon, but I guess biotech. It's a biotech stock. Look at this one year return. Three, this is the five year return, 84%. Uh, not good. Exxon. Exxon. Look at that. Breaking lows right now. Breaking lows. 90 day low below the 200 day moving average. Lowest price we've seen since before the, the, the COVID pandemic. Next one is Chevron energy stock oh told you these stocks were going to sell i told you to sell them near the 200 day moving average and now we're moving lower and again energy stocks are below energy crude oil is below 40 dollars a barrel which means more downside because it costs american frackers more than 40 dollars a barrel to buy the oil so they're bleeding money again we got to be about the 42 43 dollar level and as you could see right here we're at the 37 dollar level so cvx breakdown and finally, finally, the last one is ATE, ATGE, Global Education. I don't know about this Global Education. It's breaking hard. And it's already back near February post-pandemic or pre-pandemic lows. The bottom line is I don't like these stocks. I'll go through them again. So first we have Post. That's a dog. Then we have WWE. Don't like this stock either. Then we have HSBC. Ugh, what a dog. Then we have ATGE. These are not in any specific order, folks. Uh, breaking down. Then we have SF, F, uh, Sprout Market. I don't know. I always thought it was a pretty good stock. I would wait for it to break below, but the fact that it's all the way to 200-day line is not a good sign. Then we have Cardinal Health. Ouch, these stocks are just ugly. Then we have Chevron. Not good, and there's nothing holding it, and it's below the, the short-term support level right now. Look at that. This is February lows here. And then we got Exxon, but not the same kind of Exxon Mobil, just Exxon. Again, below the 200-day moving average, below the support level, short-term support level, not looking pretty at all. That's what I've got for you today. Yesterday, we had 90-day breakouts. Today, we have 90-day breakdowns. And folks, I've got something really, really important. So open up your ears and pay close attention. I'm not sure if you know this, but the most important work traders do happens before the market opens. When markets are open, we're just executing trades. We're following the rules that we set for ourselves before the market open. Just look at this analysis. I just did a complete analysis. I know exactly what I'm going to be looking at today before the market opens. Pre-market trading activity, it helps investors and trader, traders develop a plan of action for the day to stay ahead of this crazy and unpredictable market. And I mean it. This is a crazy and a very unpredictable market. And lately, I've been receiving helpful tips and tricks from the world's number one, that's right, world's number one pre-market trader, alerting me on trades based on signals happening before the opening bell. Now, I execute these trades after the opening bell, but all of my stops, my entry zones, my getting out levels, my risk, it's all determined before the opening bell. You do not want to miss this. The, the accuracy on these trades are scary. I mean it, folks. You don't want to miss this. This is really, really good stuff. If you'd like to get in on these trades too, click on the link below. Again, world's number one pre-market trader. Develop a plan of action for the day to stay ahead of this crazy and unpredictable market. Helpful tips and tricks from the world's number one, number one pre-market trading, alerting me to trades based on signals happening before the opening bell so we could trade during the opening bell, during market hours. 
you gotta check this out you cannot afford to miss this especially in this market right now pre this pre um, election market it's going to get very very uh, pre-election markets are tricky a lot of volatility but not a lot of trading range you need a good short-term system that works this is it follow the link below get in on these trades now and have a great day bye everyone